So today, we're playing a Berserker. And our build today involves a lot of Badger Runes. And these Badger Runes offer us up Immortality. With only catches, it's only for 7 seconds. But that's going to give us enough time to smash opponents just like this. Chance to nullify buffs. As you've seen, a lot of buffs nullified with just one Captain's Comfort. However, can we survive going up again this Holy Spear Burning Banner? And so far, but hey, check this run out and let me know what you think of this build. Okay, okay, let's go ahead and jump some rank games with the Berserker and see what we can do. Okay, so we're starting off with the Utility Pouch and we're starting off with the Goobers, which is kind of insane, not gonna lie. So with the Utility Pouch, we do want to get as much weapons as we can get. So with the Goobert, we should be able to keep ourselves alive for quite a bit. I'm going to be taking the Healing Herbs for a little bit more healing. I do actually want to grab the Sweatstone too. And I do want to roll looking for a second weapon and unfortunately it is a Broom. Or a Frame Pen. And with that for this round, I'm actually going to grab this Wooden Buckler for now. Because that's going to be damage mitigation along with triggering for our Goobert's. And I would love to craft up this Torch. So we might actually have to sell this gemstone, as much as I'd love to keep it, I do want to craft up torch this round. And with that, we're going to move on. Now, our damage is going to be quite lackluster, because we're only rocking a wooden sword, except we do have a lump coal, and we do have a whetstone. However, our healing should be pretty good, we do have damage mitigation, so that could lead to winning this round. And so far, not looking too bad, taking on this ranger, with that flame badge. And smashing. Just pausing the video here very quickly, just to ask you to subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks, now let's get back to the video. Win first round is extremely, extremely awesome. But now with that, we got ourselves a torch. We're gonna to buy an extra storage because we are definitely, definitely going to need that. At this point, I'd love to take the big old banana, but we are gonna be crafting up that spike shield. And I'm gonna take a shiny shell for now as well. Now, banana on sale, I will actually reserve. And we're gonna move on. Now, our DPS wise has increased a little bit. We do have a tiny bit of scaling damage with the torch. And it shouldn't be too bad. We do get a little bit more of a heal with the shiny shell, but is it actually going to be enough? Our opponent does have a lot of damage with the frying pan and the torch. And unfortunately, it's just going to be way too much damage for us. Super, super unfortunate. However, that is a hunger blade. That is kind of crazy. We're definitely, definitely going to take it. So at this point, I might actually sell our whetstone to grab it. Let's sell the whetstone. Let's grab the storage. Let's add in this... Hunger Blade, so that's going to be Vampirism first. Now, we do want to grab both of these two. So we're going to move on for now. And we're looking like we're in a much, much better spot. With the Spike Shield, we did get a little bit of a buff. It does now allow us to stack up four spikes, which is going to be awesome. We do get Vampirism, so we have even more healing. And we do get Lifesteal from Utility Pouch. And so far, definitely, definitely outpaced our opponents. Smashing even. And with that, I'm definitely going to take the gloves for now. I'm going to add in our banana down below. And I do actually want to take the Dragon Skull Armor, but I'm going to save her gold because I do want to craft up a Magic Torch pretty badly. So I'm just going to roll on save her three gold because the next rounds, we're going to have a higher chances for rare items. Which are going to be these blue items. Which is going to be those blueberries, it's going to be those health pots. It should be awesome. However, can we take on this Pyromancer? They are skilling up that damage with that Molten Dagger. They are eating up our spikes with Draconic Orb, which is going to be problematic. So that is going to skill up the Molten Dagger even more. And also, they are clearing a vampirism with those garlics. But our goober is going to keep us alive. Smashing. Awesome. That's a whole lot of weapons in the shop. That's kind of crazy. But I'm going to leave it for now. I do want to roll. Okay, on the for the on sale. We're going to have to grab. I do also want to grab the potion belt just for a little bit more storage. Let's grab this. What's it going to be? Down to the wells, which is fantastic, especially with the spike shield. That's going to be really, really, really awesome. I'm also going to grab some healing herbs as well. Okay, we're switching our setup around, so our Amulet of Wild is going to be targeting this Goobert. Which should be awesome. And we also have our gloves targeting both our Hunger Blade and our Banana for now. Which should be pretty good too. And we're going to move on. Now the problem is, we didn't get any blueberries, we didn't get any mana potions, or health potions. So we're going to be a little bit behind in crafting up this Magic Torch. But our setup right now should be amazing, especially since we stack up so much spikes. We should be able to deal a good bit of damage. However, opponent does have those stones, which actually... Not going to be too bad. We managed to smash down our opponent pretty decently. Now, we could just shut up go blood turn. Which I am genuinely thinking about doing. Let's go ahead and grab it. Do not want to craft up chain up whatsoever. 
And I do want to craft up Blood Turn. And we could also take our Water Tusk to craft up Claws Attack. Now we're going to change the setup to be more like this. We're going to Goobert in the center while we craft up Water Weapons. We do have a Goobert being targeted from our Banana and our Spike Shield, along with our weapons. And with that, we might actually sell our Torch in favor of actually grabbing up another Water Tusk, which I'm going to do. Let's sell our Torch. Let's sell the Shiny Shield to roll once, and I do actually want it to get both these items. And with that, we're going to move on. I'm taking the Corrupted Crystal so we can craft up a Cap Discomfort, just in case we come across some big healing builds. And to be honest, there's a lot of healing builds in the game right now. However, this opponent does have a ton of armor with that Holy Armor. We stacked up a crazy amount of spikes. So we should be able to smash him. The Amulet of Wills is actually fantastic Amulet. Especially with Blood Turn. Which is awesome. Right now, that's going to be fantastic. Now, we could recombobulate. We don't exactly want to. I do actually want to grab this Corrupted Crystal. I want to grab this Letter Bag. That's a Mana Orb. Not going to take though. And we could take a second whip. Although, we're definitely, definitely going to be taking both these items. And we're going to move on for now. Now, the problem is, our Corrupted Crystal is going to be a trigger for our Goobert. He is going to be super, super slow though. Every five half seconds. Inflict that Fatigue. But with our Blood Turn, we should be able to smash our opponent. We want to definitely want to get a better trigger for Goobert. I'm kind of leaning towards going for a bloody Goobert. But smash, we got our life back. Now we got a chase to make. Which subclass should we actually go for? At this point, I do kind of want to go Shaman Mask. Now, we don't have any gemstones, but Shaman Mask is pretty darn good with Blood Turn because it's going to be stacking up a lot of buffs for us. But it does mean we are going to need either gemstones or a way to stack up luck. Or we could go with the Wolf Emblem. Wolf Emblem, which will just give us crit chance of Blood Turn, which is also pretty awesome. Now, we've only got two crafted items, otherwise I would consider also going Anvil. Chieftain, we could actually take since we get Lifesteal, but I don't think it's going to work grabbing. And also, Brass Knuckles is pretty darn good. It does stack up our accuracy and our crit chance. So I'm kind of tied between both these for now. We're going to rock Shaman Mask today. And we got the Badger Rune, which is amazing. And holy moly, did we get a crazy shop. Our container for that skinning Vampirism. Prismatic Orb to get that Vampirism from the very beginning. This is genuinely insane. First of all, we're going to take the Badger Rune. Next up, we're going to take the Capsidence. I would much prefer having this out, but I'm going to leave it in it. Our helmet for now. That way, we get two luck from the very beginning and we can start getting those random buffs. Here, we're going to move on. We definitely want every single one of these items. We should be in a much, much better standing. Winner setup. Yeah, we start off with two luck, which is going to use up from our Shaman Mask, which is going to stack up our buffs. And we should be able to smash our bones. Insanely awesome. Now, this cap discomfort, we should be able to reduce our opponent's healing by quite a bit. We should be crazy good too. Now, for this round, I'm going to be taking a hard container. I'm going to put in our cap discomfort and I'm going to take out our Walrus Tusk for this round. And I'm also going to opt to have our setup to be more like this because we only have one gemstone slotted in right now, so we're not actually going to get that buff second from the Shaman Mask. So, unfortunately, we're going to roll on. Now, taking a Prismatic Orb does give us a chance to stack up a little bit of buffs, but it is. Every one buff every eight seconds. Which is going to be problematic. We definitely, definitely need to get a flutes or find a way to stack up luck. However, this pawn is dealing a crazy damage with that flame up. And unfortunately, we're going to fall a little bit too far behind. For sure. However, speaking of crazy shop, holy moly, this is actually getting insane. We're getting extreme luck. Let's grab the badger rune. It's going to be the fastest blood turn alive. We definitely want to craft off vampire gloves. We definitely want to grab healing herbs, and we just cannot afford this for now. And honestly, I do want to grab the eye lamp, that way we scale up our accuracy as well. Which is going to be awesome. However, I do actually want to sell this so we can actually grab this little bit of storage. That way we can add in our healing herbs. And we're going to grab stone too. And with that, we're going to move on. We should be in a much, much better standing as it is. Because once you craft off vampire gloves, we should be able to turbo stack our vampirism like crazy. However, with Nocturnal Locklifter, this could be problematic, even with one cap discomforts. They're still gonna have crazy, crazy healing. But fantastic, we managed to pass him out anyway. And we're seeing all the bad runes, which is kind of insane. We're definitely gonna be taking Prismatic Guard, but we're gonna slot in down below, like so, and then we can fit this in. 
like this. Now that should be awesome. We should be able to get two vampirism and a little bit of healing efficiency. Which should be awesome. Now I'm going to sell our stone because I'm going to be taking a bad drone that way. We're going to be taking a lot less damage during our bad rage, which is going to be insane. And we're going to move on. Definitely want to grab the eye lamp too, so we can actually scale up our accuracy. Now with the luck, we should have 100% accuracy, but once we use up our luck, our accuracy is going to dip. And especially if we're going to begin an opponent's which is going to be stacking blind, and holy moly, they have four Gooberts. They're going to go for that rainbow Gubert. which is definitely absurd. Now, we could have also went for bloody Gubert, which we probably should have. But so far, smashing. Vampire gloves are going to be way... Vampire gloves are going to be too good not to take, giving us five vampires, and also making our blood turn trigger faster and faster. Let's go ahead and continue on for now. Not looking too bad. We have one more round to go before we... And that's Jin's Lamp and a Pineapple. Stacking spikes. Which could be fantastic. This is also going to be fantastic with Shaman Mask because that does stack up. Look, so we got extremely lucky grabbing, getting this on sale, especially. So we're going to have to take out a set of healing herbs for now. We're going to lock in our Jin's Lamp in this position. It's not going to be super ideal. We'd much prefer having to target our Blood Turn. Now, I do actually want to reserve the Pineapple, but we're going to move on for now. We could also take this Holy Armor, but I much prefer getting Vampire Camera. But we're just basically using this Jin's Lamp to start stacking up either spikes or our look. Since we're going to be using upper look, Jin's Lamp is going to be draining up that look for our Shaman Mask. So we can keep consistently scaling up our buffs. However, this fight's going to be super close. And holy moly, was that way too close. That chain up dealing massive, massive damage towards the end. And awesome. We've actually managed to win. Which is crazy. Crazy good. But let's have a quick little DPS check after 15 seconds. We managed to deal 37 DPS, which is not too bad, to be quite honest. I do want to check after 10 seconds, though. So after 10 seconds, we're dealing about 20 DPS, so and it did literally take us a while to ramp up a good bit. Now let's check our heals. Healing is actually not too bad whatsoever. We can definitely make this a lot stronger. Now a block, we have no block, so there's no point in actually checking it. And then I do also want to check stamina one more time, especially since we have two bad runes. And our stamina after 15 seconds of literally ramping is 1.3. Even with the Vampire Gloves. That's kind of absurd. However, the decrease to the attack speed with the utility pouch has played a big factor in it as well. Now it says 1.7 stamina cost, and the longer the fight goes on, the more and more stamina is going to cost us. However, I do believe that we do want to find more gloves and more ways to make that faster. But anyway, I do believe we can actually continue on, so let's go ahead and do that. And holy bad rune, it definitely wants to play bad runes. And that is genuinely crazy. Also, our bag opportunity is a protective purse, which is not super great. I'm going to take the pineapple for now. I do actually want to grab this helmet, try to craft up a second capitalist comfort. And I will actually be taking this fanny pack. Reason to take the fanny pack is it's going to increase this believable blood turn even just a little bit. Which just means we cannot have our vampire gloves to target the pineapple, so we have that scaling spikes. Now, with two bad runes in our armors, we should take a lot less damage during that bad rage. But for now, I'm going to roll once more, and that's a corrupted crystal that is fantastic. Two capture comforts is going to be awesome. It's going to be 60% healing reduction and 30% chance to nullify buffs. As you've seen, a lot of buffs nullified with just one capture comfort. However, can we survive going up again this Holy Spear Burning Banner? And so far, smashing. We definitely, definitely want to get a Wood Protector to help with our stamina. Okay, that's a second Prismatic Orb. So we do have 14 goals. We're going to start off with taking the back. And we're just going to slot it in for now. I do want to grab a cap discomforts. And unfortunately, I think we're going to sell these healing herbs in favor of actually grabbing this to craft up the second cap discomfort. We could also go for Heart of Darkness, but I'd actually prefer going for cap discomfort right now. Now, if we did have a second one of these, I would literally go for the Heart of Darkness over the cap discomforts. I do also desperately, desperately want this prismatic orb. And I'm going to have to sort our inventory out. So I'll be back in a second while you do that here. Now, we did change our setup to be more like this. Now, we did lose the value on our pineapple for now, but with our Gooberts, on our Jin's Lamp, this should be much, much better. Now, we did still want to craft up bloody Gooberts, or we could go for light Gooberts. Either way, one of these two late game Gooberts I do want to go for. Now, we're going to be crafting up the second cap discomfort. We still have our spike shield and our pineapple target at Gooberts. However, we're going to move on like this. Now, our Prismatic Orb is going to be in this position, still giving us that Vampirism and that healing efficiency, which should be awesome. However, our opponent is going to be turbo stacking Poison on us. They're going to be dealing that big damage with that Tusk Poker, but with those two badge runes, smashing. 
just keeping us alive long enough to answer back at our opponents. And right now, in 10 seconds, our Blood Turn is dealing a lot more damage than it was previously, which is much, much better for us. And for this round, we're going to be taking Prismatic Orb. We could go for that Prismatic Sword, but we don't exactly want to. Now, we could take some of these items, but I'm actually not going to take it either way. I actually do want to grab another Corrupted Crystal. That's going to be too good not to take, and I do also want to grab this Protective Purse. And for this round, we're going to have our setup to be more like this for now. We should be a lot better. Because with our Prismatic Orbs right now, we should be able to scale up a lot more Vampirism. Literally, we're going to have six Vampirism from the very beginning, which is going to increase our damage by a good amount. It's also going to be a hell of a lot more healing efficiency because now all of a sudden we went from 4% to having 8% and 8%, which is awesome. With that, we're going to move on. I'm going to grab this Corrupted Crystal in hopes of finding another one of these Capitalist Comforts. Rather than crafting up Hearted Darkness, because I do actually want that healing efficiency. So with our stacked up Vampirism, we can get a bit more healing. Because once it crafts up in the Heart of Darkness, we actually just inflict those debuffs. And smashing, taking out this other Berserker with the Damage Steel and that Spike Staff. And with that, since we added in the second Prismatic Orb, our damage has increased significantly in that 10 seconds. Which is smashing. So the more we get these Prismatic Orbs, the more damage we're going to be doing. Let's go ahead and grab the Corrupted Crystal for now. Let's go ahead and roll. That's a Hawk Rune. That is also stacking luck, but I actually do not think we actually need this roots. Now comes the hard chase. We did get ourselves a Hawk Rune, which will give us big crit damage. Now the difference between the Badge Rune and the Hawk Rune, not too sure which one is actually going to be better. Because right now with two Badge Runes, we're going to be making this Blood Turn go turbo nuts, especially with your Tilty Pouch, which is a little bit lackluster. With attack speed. Roughly around one in every seven to eight hits is going to be a big crit. So are we willing to lose a lot of attack speed or this Hawk Rune. Honestly, I'm gonna grab it. I do wanna roll, that's a spike collar. Do we actually want a spike collar? It is pretty darn good. It does allow us to be immortal for a long time. So we're actually gonna reserve it, but I still wanna roll. And I do wanna grab a stamina sack. Now the eye lamp could be awesome, but I think we're gonna be okay with one. Unless our opponent is going turbo stack and blind. We should be all right. Now I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. I do wanna see when we get those big crits. Are we going to be invulnerable? Jordan Batteridge. Yeah, you can see those big numbers. And holy moly, that's a big damage number. Definitely, definitely worth having in. For sure. And yeah, Jordan Batteridge, we're not taking any damage, but Batteridge doesn't last forever. And they have stacked up that damage. And it's just barely enough time to keep ahead. Which is awesome for us. Now we're going to take the Samus Sack, but we're going to opt to have a Pineapple. We're going to take the Spike Color. I'm going to roll. That's the second Spike Color. Should we take two? It is the final round to craft, so if we do want to find that cap discomfort, we're going to have to look now. We could also grab a cheese if we do want to, but I'm going to leave it. Now, even with this Gooberts, which we never crafted up into Bloody Gooberts, I was hoping to find more Bloody Amulets. Just fell a little bit short in getting that going. Now, Lightsaber would be fantastic to craft up like Goobert. That would be crazy, crazy good for us. But I don't think we can actually craft it up. I actually genuinely don't believe it. It's going to be way too much. We'd have to sell this corrupted crystal, which is four. Brings it up to seven. We could sell these items. So that's five. That's nine. That's 12 gold. We could sell all these. And then we could craft up that little cupboards. Are we willing to take a risk to craft it up? Out of selling all these, I do actually want to keep our spike colors as long as possible. Because two seconds longer in battle range is significant. Because they're only in battle range for 5 seconds, so basically that is going to be nearly 50% increase. About a 40% increase in battle range. And with all these battle runes, we're going to be immortal. So I actually don't think it's going to be as worth it. It would be extremely strong, but I actually don't think it's worth selling all these enemies. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to roll. Let's keep it going. That's another elephant rune. But it's not the rune I'm looking for. It does give us a lot of max HP, which is awesome. I'm still not going to take it. So with that, we're going to move on once again. And we definitely, definitely could have had a better Goobert. Especially that Light Goobert will be 20 healing every time it triggers, rather than 9. And also inflicts Blind. However, our opponent, this opponent, is actually dealing a lot of damage to us. However, can we bring it back? It's going to be close. But holy moly, just barely winning out. These Badger Runes keeping us alive. And that 2 extra seconds in that Spike Color. Keeping us alive, for sure. If he actually saw that, we definitely, definitely would have been lost. For sure. But what an interesting build too. Darksaber with a bunch of dark dragons inflicting a lot of debuffs. 
Definitely an interesting build. And I almost won over him. But let's go ahead and move on for now. And we can finally craft up our bloody goobert. And we can finally craft up that bloody goobert just one turn two line. However, I'm still going to grab it. Just so we get a little bit more Baron Prism off the get-go. I do actually want to switch this up here because then we can actually add it down below. And all of a sudden, that is going to give us two more Vampirism at the very beginning, which is going to be fantastic. With that, we do have seven gold left. I'm going to roll. We can go for that Light Goobert. We're not going to take it. Let's go ahead and continue to roll. We can at six some cheese. We could have also crafted up cheese Goobert earlier as well, which would have been fantastic, especially with the Shaman Mask, and would be stacking up a lot of life for us. However, we're still not going to take it. I'm going to continue to roll, and we can at take a final, final little Fanny Pack. Just increase the speed of one of our items. Which I'm going to opt to have our fighting back in this position, targeting both our Hurricane Center and our Pineapple. Which is going to be pretty darn good. Two more gold, let's go ahead and roll another Cryptic Crystal and finally that Dragon Scammer. That we did miss for quite some time. But this is going to be our final setup. Definitely could be way more improved. By getting a better Goobert, especially that bloody Goobert would be fantastic, especially with our setup. And then also, getting a third Prism Prismatic Orb in this position. However, we did pretty well to manage to get this far. Round 18 with 5 lives, and our final round. But this build definitely, definitely has way more potential to get even stronger. With that, I mean, it was with Blood Thorn, it's just awesome as well. But definitely underrated are all these badge runes in our armor slots to basically make us mortal. But let's go ahead and see. Is this going to be good enough, or is it going to fall short at the very end? Can we keep our lives? Now, we are going to be getting Nocturnal Locklifter, which is exactly why I wanted these captain's comforts. Can we stop their healing? And we're in that battle rage. We take a lot less damage. And holy moly, are we doing big, big damage. And smashing down Nocturnal Locklifter. Insane. And awesome, we did manage to survive with 5 lives towards the end. But I did want to check our DPS in 10 seconds. And honestly, the fight only lasted 10 seconds. And we managed to deal 50 damage. So we managed to bring up our DPS from about 25 DPS to about 50 DPS in 10 seconds. Which is not too bad. And also a thing to know. This build does counter Nocturnal Locklifter pretty hard because they don't get that lifesteal if they're dealing zero damage, by the way. As you see during that battle rage, you can see those damage numbers being zero. If you look on the right hand side, you see those big green zero circles. Meaning that when they hit us, they're not dealing the damage, they're not getting that healing. We also nullify a lot of their buffs. But just our build directly countered the healing builds. And honestly, we might not have actually needed the Captain's Discomforts, but still, they're pretty darn good. Now we did also want to check our own heals. In comparison, the Nocturnal Locklifter. And with that, they actually didn't manage to heal whatsoever because during that battle rage, we had 7 seconds of battle rage. And the fight only lasted 10 seconds, which is absurd. We managed to heal for about 40 healing per second from the utility pouch along with the Vampirism because of the healing efficiency and the Vampirism that we did stack up. And finally, we had 13 block coming from this one little tiny pouch. But awesome, this build was a ton of fun and definitely could have been way, way stronger. We did survive 5 lives left. How much rank points did we get? Did we get the full 17? We got plus 16. Which not too bad. It did rank up quite a bit. But anyways, I'm going to leave it here for now. I just want to say thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, or even consider subscribing. And I hope you can look out for the next one. See you next time.